Ladies and gentlemen, it's finally here. The Doppelganger. Revisited. Remastered. Revitalized. Revamped. We're going full re today. Full re. So anyways, guys, the reason I'm so excited for this build is if you don't know anything about me and my history with Dishonored 2, Doppelganger was the first playstyle I've ever adopted. And going through the game multiple times has really given me a different perspective on how to utilize this skill. And... I really wanted to revitalize this build to the extent where it almost felt like a new build entirely. You know, throwing in the new game plus mechanics as well. You know, alternating weapons. You know, I don't want to spoil too much, so let's just get into the build. Alright, first and foremost, let's get into the equipment upgrades. Now, I'm going to be doing this a little bit differently than traditional. Instead of separating upgrades by base upgrades and masterwork upgrades, I'm going to instead give you an ordered list of when I think you should purchase the upgrade. Since the game doesn't give you unlimited currency at the start, I feel like this is the best way to go about this. So first and foremost, grab your bone charm slots so you can equip all your bone charms. It's really important, helps your build a lot early on in the game. It's the first upgrade you should get. After that, go ahead and grab all the base upgrades for your crossbow. This is going to increase your crossbow's overall performance, the crossbow being our primary ranged weapon for this build. After that, go ahead and grab the hardened bolt. This is going to increase the overall damage of your steel bolt. Again, this is probably the most important bolt in the game <laughs> when it comes to your crossbow. You can use secondary bolts, but I barely do because the steel bolt is just so flexible. It has incredible range, incredible damage, and it's very, very good in stealth. After that, grab all the crossbow ammo capacity upgrades, allowing us to carry more of the steel bolt. The steel bolt, again, being the most important. After that, go ahead and grab silent running one and two. This is going to further put an emphasis on our stealth gameplay yes this build is capable of stealth it actually promotes um both play styles in the end i'll probably discuss this a bit more in the gameplay segment or not the gameplay segment in the tips and play style segment of the video after that i like to grab long distance lava for our crossbow i really like this masterwork upgrade over the double penetration counterpart. I don't remember its actual name because I've never used it, but I've experimented with it. And to be honest, I find that I actually wind up hitting my doppelgangers at times, which I don't like. And I don't like the fact that I have to charge this up. I feel like it's, it's like I have to wait in combat for this ability to be effective. It only really works inside of stealth when it takes to lining up double kills, but I don't know, I just find it more satisfying to use Long Distance Lover. Plus you get a really nice scope and I enjoy it. I really enjoy the Long Distance Scope, I'm not gonna lie. It's just cool, it's like this little this little scope on your crossbow. It's immersive because Emily doesn't have any way to aim that crossbow. How does she land those shots, I'm just saying. After that, I like to grab Collector's Carapace or Moth Dust Wrappings. I found that with this build because it can, you know, favor either playstyle depending on how you want to play. I like Collector's Carapace a bit more personally, but Moth Dust Wrappings can be easy or um easily just as useful simply due to the fact that you can use both playstyles. So I'll leave that at your discretion whether you want to use Collector's Carapace or Moth Dust Wrappings. After that I like to grab Monkey Wrench. Monkey Wrench is a really good complement to the crossbow because the crossbow as such doesn't really kill the clockwork soldiers but it can shoot off the head of a clockwork soldier with monkey wrench in conjunction you can immediately pull off a stealth kill and furthermore monkey wrench is also extremely useful due to the fact that if we get build up our bloodlust our blood thirst rather that will be a power we will be getting we can instantly kill clockwork soldiers as well to further emphasize this, our doppelgangers, if they break the line of sight of a clockwork soldier and we go into a stealthy stance, we can actually instantly take down clockwork soldiers. So Monkey Wrench adds a lot of flexibility to this build, and it adds, like, it makes clockwork soldiers basically a non-issue. Like, you can spam them to death, you do absurd damage to them, they die extremely easily. I really enjoy Monkey Wrench over this. Plus, Witches are a Cult Kiss, I think is, is the name of the other masterwork for um, your sword. Isn't as useful, because the Witches just go down a lot easier, and we're going to have other tools to deal with Witches as well. 
So that's why I recommend Monkey Wrench as the masterwork upgrade for your sword. After that, I like to grab the Incendiary and Combustion Bolts. This is basically going to make your Fire Bolts as effective as possible and allow you to purchase them at the Black Market. It's basically like having a really, really fast launching Molotov Cocktail that just instantly kills two enemies on average. I don't even use it that much in this video because, again, the Steel Bolts are just so superior in almost every way. I love using them. So, yeah, it, it's just honestly just very, very useful. Especially if an enemy takes cover or something, you can usually get them from the corner using one of these Molotov-esque cocktail bolts. After that, I like to grab Howling Bolt, and then following that, I like to grab the Ancient Howling Bolt. Because this build doesn't have any tools of the trade to deal with witches on a cheese-like basis, I like to have the Ancient Howling Bolt. Just in case if I ever get swarmed, I do have a get out of jail free card. Though to be honest, this isn't the most important upgrade on our list, and I put it at the bottom, simply due to the fact that your doppelgangers will actually help you out a lot more in witch combat, because they're very effective at dealing with witches, because their AI is very similar to witches. And if they cause a witch to lose line of sight to you, just like the Clockwork Soldiers, you can really sprint up on them and get instant kills for free. So you get why I put this at the bottom. However, I wanted to give you all some tools just in case if you wanted to play a certain way. You can be overly aggressive with the Ancient Howling Bolts, which is are fundamentally useless against you. And having the Hound Howling Bolt just didn't seem useful at all. Again, doppelgangers just kind of help you deal with these situations. So that's why I put this at the bottom of the list, but I still recommend it. So for our necessary powers, first and foremost, grab Doppelganger. You're going to grab Doppelganger and all of its ranks. There's so much utility to this skill. There's a lot of usefulness. Basically, Doppelgangers at their maximum rank, after you get all of the ranks associated with the perk, are like combat monsters. You can summon up to two of them. They have amazing fighting AI because they can teleport. They constantly put pressure on enemies. If they break an enemy's line of sight, whether they're a witch, a dog, or a clockwork soldier, you can run in and get an instant kill on them with your sword. Additionally, you can take a vantage point using one of our mobility skills I'm going to talk about here in a minute, and then actually support them as a sniper if you want to. Furthermore, even if your doppelgangers get bested in combat, they'll explode in a cloud of dust, causing an enemy to be in a vulnerable state, which they can also be instant killed from. There's just so much flexibility with the doppelgangers in general. In fact, you can even use them in a stealthy playstyle. If an enemy, for example, is unaware of their presence and you spawn a doppelganger behind them, this will result in an instant kill upon the doppelganger spawning in. Doppelgangers do not hesitate to kill enemies from behind. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and this is a weird mechanic, certain guards that are leaning over certain structures cannot be insta-killed. Also, guards that are sitting down cannot be insta-killed through stealth doppelganger use. I just want to keep that in mind, or let you keep that in mind, if you're going to take up that playstyle. But doppelgangers, they're useful in life and death, and they will serve you well. After this, we're gonna grab all ranks of Blink. We're actually gonna throw out Far Reach for this build, because Blink is just very, very flexible. First of all, you can actually use it in combat to like kick enemies across the room. I've done this one time in testing, but to be honest, I don't really use it for this as much as a transportation skill. It helps you get to vantage points, and it's actually a better stealth mobility skill. You don't need bone charms to make the threat invisible like you do with Far Reach. And the ease of use of Blink is just absurd. The fact that you freeze time when you hold the Blink and while you're not moving, time will freeze itself. This really gives you a lot of options when you're in combat. Furthermore, we are going to be picking up Bloodthirsty later on, which I'll get into. But you can use Blink to actually complement Bloodthirsty as well, which I'll get into when I talk about Bloodthirsty. So Blink has a lot of use for both stealth and open combat, which is amazing. Just the flexibility, the ease of use. I think Blink overall is just the superior um, skill when it comes to this doppelganger build. After that, I like to grab all ranks of Strength. Now, Strength... We're literally using this for the fun of smashing doors with our sword. That is really the only purpose of getting strength. 
throwing objects further can sometimes come into play and it's fun to do but it's not ultimately necessary but you know since we have all these leftover runes from our previous playthroughs of the game might as well pick it up for fun after that grabbing all ranks of vitality to have more health and more sustain then grabbing reflexes but only grabbing the superior deflection rank and the adept parry rank i don't really like snap reaction or whatever the, the, the sliding one is it just feels goofy and breaks the flow of combat for me so i prefer superior deflection so that i can put enemies bullets back into their face holes and then adept parry so my parry window is absurdly large and leads to so many instant kills it's like basically a broken skill and of course after this we're gonna pick up agility grabbing all of its ranks so we can fall from high heights and not die and also move really fast and jump really high then we're gonna grab bloodthirsty and we're gonna be grabbing all ranks this works perfectly in conjunction with blink basically what you can do is when you're getting um, double kills with blink you can freeze time then teleport to the next enemy and then follow up the second slash it is really effective and a much easier to use than far reach with it with um the bloodthirst perk all ranks of bloodthirst making adrenaline extremely easy to accumulate in combat leading to instant kills not only for every enemy type in the game but with monkey wrench in conjunction we're actually going to be able to use our bloodthirst to kill clockwork soldiers really really awesome then at last but not least we're going to have our bone charm crafting so we can craft our necessary bone charms for this build that's really all i have to say on our power segment guys these are all the powers you're going to be utilizing and oh my god it's a lot of fun so much uh, literally i've had a good time making this gameplay it's been absurdly good like the synergy the synergy so time for the bone charm segment I'm going to be doing this a little bit differently than traditional as well because I don't want to make my builds around bone charm farming ever again. I hate this mechanic. It's an abortion. It shouldn't be in the game. You should just have all the bone charms for new game plus for fuck's sake. It's annoying because it, it makes me just cringe having to keep reloading a level again and again and again and having to sit through those loading screens no longer. I'm going to be giving you 10 base bone charms to upgrade and you can use this throughout the playthrough. It will be 100% effective and fun. And if you want to alternate bone charms that I recommend later on, both in the black and corrupt sections, then you can. So starting with our base bone charms, we have first and foremost ground glider. I really enjoy this one because ground glider allows you to glide on the ground faster, which it gives you momentum after doing a certain jump. It also leads to instant kills if you slide into an enemy because your sliding speed is fast even if the enemy does a back jump you can still catch up with them and get the instant kill after this i like to grab vengeance vengeance basically makes it to where if you take any damage during open combat you accumulate more adrenaline making you an instant kill machine this build is very very useful with bloodthirst because we're going to be alternating blink in conjunction with it which just synergizes so well you're going to be able to make full use of the bloodthirst mechanic in this game it just takes a little practice if you're not used to it after this i like to grab swift shadow this is going to increase the speed at which we crouch walk because this build is both an open combat and stealth build having swift shadow just makes our stealth a lot more flexible gives a nice flow to it and it makes our stealth faster than our default walking speed <laughs> while standing which is pretty amusing after this i like to grab bird of prey blink is really useful in any combat situation to getting to a vertical point and then following up with an instant kill bird of prey is going to allow us to heal ourselves in combat without the use of health potions which is just really fun and flexible it makes you feel like you just can't die after that i like to use spirited spirited is just going to make our mana elixirs absurdly potent so upon using one you're going to refill an entire mana bar it's as simple as that after that we're going to grab falling star like bird of prey it does basically the same thing drop assassination is going to heal you falling star is going to heal your mana instead though and it's really useful because doppelgangers as such use a lot of mana 
and I feel like it really adds sustain to this build when you have both Bird of Prey and Falling Star working together to help you replenish your mana and health. After this, I like to use Resilient Allies, which gives our doppelgangers more health, basically allowing our doppelgangers to stay in the fight longer, cause more distractions, wreak more havoc, raise more hell. Like, look, Resilient Allies is amazing. Then Enduring Allies is going to increase the duration of our doppelgangers on the field. Doppelgangers don't really last that long, but Enduring Allies definitely helps pad that out for you. Makes them stay the entire fight as opposed to just either dying immediately or not, you know, doing anything and then just leaving the fight. You know, making you clean up everything. I really find Enduring Allies to be a quintessential bone charm to this build. After that, I like to grab Void Favor. Void Favor, extremely useful, guys. Extremely useful. Because if you cast a doppelganger and it eats no mana, or if you're doing a bunch of chain teleports and it consumes mana only half the time, you just have so much of this reserve mana to use for other things, for additional blinks, for additional doppelgangers if one dies. It's just really nice to have. I really enjoy Void Favor, and I haven't used it in a lot of my builds and I, I just need to stop that. It's really fun for mana spam builds. And then for our last bone charm, it's actually going to be a mix. We're gonna mix three spirit water and one liquid, li liquid, liquid sustenance. <laughs> the reason we're doing this is because I find that having three of the spirit water is easy to get from the tap. So basically the way these bone charms work is when you drink from the tap, or you activate any tap in the game, whether it's a beer tap, a bathtub tap, or a sink tap, you replenish a certain stat. I like to put it a lot into the mana replenishment because I don't feel like you're going to be taking a lot of damage because you have so much support and sustain with this build. I just don't think it's as necessary to have the health one, Liquid Sustenance. But replenishing your mana on the fly at faucets with Spirit Water times 3 is really useful, and it doesn't eat up two slots to max out both of them. So I like to go with the mix for number 10. Now, when it comes to bone charms that you can alternate, and you can always swap out bone charms at whim based on which ones you want to use for your playstyle, the bone charms that I'm going to be recommending for the Corrupt are going to be Shivering Silhouette. This is the only one that I find useful for the Corrupt section, and we'll get into that because it just works absurdly well. And this is only for open combat playstyle focus. If you want to focus on the open combat playstyle for this build, I recommend this one, but if not, I don't recommend it. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, where's, where's Power Slash? Why is Power Slash not on this list? This build has so much instant kill potential, you don't need it. You do not need Whirlwind, you do not need Power Slash. It is just not necessary. So, before anyone posts, like, I would like to have Power Slash and Whirlwind, look, look at the gameplay in front of you. Look at all the tools you have to instantly kill your opponents. It's not necessary. And if anything, it's just not needed. So I don't recommend Power Slash or Whirlwind at all for the Doppelganger build. It's just not needed. You accumulate Bloodthirst so quickly. You just get instant kills from every angle whether it's drop assassinations whether it's your doppelgangers removing line of sight there's just so many ways to instant kill why would you ever use these two it's just a waste of a slot and then for our black bone charms you can have leech cuts or twin leech both of these are gonna basically get more sustain out of our build basically any kill with leech cuts with our sword is going to help regenerate our health which is extremely powerful for this build because you're going to be doing a lot of that and then twin leech is when your doppelgangers are on the field you just regenerate health it's it's ridiculous having either of these is going to make you just feel like a god but like i said you can rock the traditional 10 bone charms you don't need to farm any of this and that's the beauty of the bone charm segment that's all for you. I hope you guys try this out. It's a lot of fun. All right, guys, we're heading towards the end of the video. So I'm going to be giving you some playstyle advice, and then I'm going to slap a verdict on it. How much did I enjoy the build? So as far as the playstyle goes, you're, you know, pretty set. You can play either stealth or open combat freely, and I recommend alternating between them. You should think in your head, okay, what's the most efficient way to clear this room with doppelgangers? That's really the only thing you need to keep in mind. 
and experimenting with different play styles throughout this build has been so much fun and I love alternating between the two. But if you want to take it in one direction or the other, it's definitely possible. The only limitation is your imagination. But think of the skills you can utilize. You can use the crossbow as like a sniper to kind of support your doppelgangers from a vertical position. You never have to compromise your position. You can let your doppelgangers kind of do the bulk of the work. Or alternatively, you can kind of kill one guy with a crossbow, let him be distracted by the fact that his friend just died, he runs over to the body, you summon a doppelganger behind him, he instantly dies. Then all of a sudden a third guy runs into the room, he kills the doppelganger, but then he's vulnerable to an instant kill, you shoot him with a crossbow, rinse and repeat. You can do things like that, or you can run into a room, summon two doppelgangers, just start fighting everyone with your sword, your doppelgangers will kill or distract enemies causing you to get more and more instant kills. If you manage to get hit during the fight, you're going to accumulate even more adrenaline, you're going to chain together some of the bloodthirst kills, and if your doppelgangers let you kill the enemies they're fighting by taking away their line of sight and you running up behind them with the silent sprint ability or blinking, which is also an effective tool, you can freeze time, blink behind them, get a free instant kill. Get your bloodthirst up, kill two guys with the blink combo as well. There's just a lot going on. Or your doppelgangers are getting a little overwhelmed. Blink to that guy, kick him across the room, kill the person that is having their line of sight broken by, by your doppelganger. There's just a lot going on with the playstyle here. And I only utilized it in a certain way, I feel like. I feel like there are still crazy combinations that you could throw together using your doppelgangers, both in open combat settings and non-open combat settings. And that's why I love this build so much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my favorite build I've put together to date. Just because of the amount of variety, the zaniness of it, I really love the way the doppelgangers behave and how they bump into shit, how they're like kind of obnoxious in a way, and they're kind of unpredictable. They don't always do what you want them to do, and I feel like it just adds so much spice and flavor to this build that I just had an absurd amount of fun doing this. I really, really love this playstyle. I think this is the pinnacle of my builds as far as entertainment value goes. I don't think you can beat that. I really, really don't. Now, there are certain things that are more challenging. Like, I think the Batgirl build is probably as challenging as a build can get. You know, War Machine's definitely more challenging because you have no powers. But just fun factor. This build is insane. I enjoyed every minute of it, and I hope you guys did as well. Anyways, guys, loved this one. This is a fantastic build. I recommend it. <laughs> it's so much fun. Violent Games, signing off.